The topic of our short lecture today will be black holes. Most of you probably heard a lot of black holes in terms of popular science or uh, science fiction and you probably heard various things about their properties. But the real question, and that is the question that we want to discuss today is what are exactly the black holes and uh, how did physicists came up with this idea. Why do physicists think that black holes exist? And uh, how do we describe them? So we'll be discussing all these questions and showing some basic mathematical tools which will enable us to answer them. The first thing that we should stress is that Black holes are a consequence of general theory of relativity. So, black holes follow as a solution of equations of general theory of relativity. And general theory of relativity is actually theory of gravity. So, general theory of relativity describes gravity in terms of the space-time curvature, or what is the geometry of the space-time. So, in order to understand how black holes appear, we need to go to the central point of general theory of relativity, and that central point is actually the Einstein field equation. So, the mathematical equation which describes the relationship between the geometry of space time and matter and energy. So, we can write this equation in the following form. Now, in this lecture, we will not go exactly in detail into the question of what those things mean mathematically. It will be enough to say, for our purpose, that those are actually the mathematical objects. This type of mathematical object, which has these two types of indices, is called a tensor. But we will be concerned with the meaning of those objects. And the meaning is as follows. This object on the left hand side, which is called the Einstein tensor, represents the space-time geometry. And this object on the right hand side, which has the same form, mathematically speaking, it is again the tensor, it has those two indices, represents the matter and energy. This pi is just the same pi that you learned in the elementary school. And this g is the Newton constant of gravity. So it's just a, a number. And this number is equal to 6.67 10 to minus 11. And these are just the units the unit of force, Newton, the unit of distance, meter squared, divided by the unit of mass of uh, kilogram squared. So, what this equation is actually telling us is that space-time geometry, or the curvature of the space-time geometry, to be more precise, is proportional to the matter energy. So here we have space-time geometry, its curvature, here we have some matter energy distribution. And they are proportional. The one is equal to another multiplied by a constant. That means that actually, if you have matter energy, then on the left hand side you will have something which is different from zero, which will describe how the geometry is curved. Or, to put it in other words, if you have some non-vanishing uh, value of this object on the left-hand side, that's, that means that this, there will be some curvature in the space-time geometry, and by this proportionality it follows that then you need to have matter energy. So, the distribution of matter energy tells the space-time how to curve and actually the curvature of the space-time geometry 
is uh, indicating that there is matter energy. And then matter energy actually moves on this space time that is caused in its geometrical form to exist in such a specific state because of its distribution of matter energy. So that is the, the basic idea. And the thing is that we can solve this equation mathematically and obtain various solutions. And the simplest solution is if we choose a vacuum as our physical configuration of interest, as something that we want to study. That means that the value of this object is actually zero. So vacuum means that we put this thing in equal to zero. So actually, in this case, the equation that we need to solve is like this. So we have this object which describes the curvature of space-time and uh, the total object needs to be equal to zero. And then one searches what, what is the type of geometry that will satisfy this equation. And, uh, you, you take different possible uh, solutions and then you try them until you get the right one. And the thing is, and that is very interesting, that the general solution of this actually contains a black hole. So the black hole comes necessarily from general relativity because it is the vacuum solution of the Einstein's equation. And we will now describe more exactly what does this mean, actually?